What's better for losing weight, lifting weights or doing cardio? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. But before we go into it, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button below, because on this channel, uh, I'm gonna share with you how to lose all the weight you want without starvation, without cardio, and without cutting out carbs, and really become one of the probably 1% of entrepreneurs who are successful and also have a great looking, high performing body. What's up everybody, this is Coach Amir from 7figurebody.com and in today's video, one of the most you know, commonly asked questions is should I be lifting weights or should I be doing cardio if my goal is to lose weight? And unfortunately I have to say, which you probably heard me say before many times, both of these exercise types suck for, <laughs> you know, as a weight loss tool or for losing weight. Why? Simply because all exercise types burn way fewer calories than we think and on that note, cardio also suffers from something called constrained energy model, which simply means not all calories that you burn through cardio, even steps that neat component of metabolism, uh, do not, all of those calories do not linearly go into actually being, you know, part of that calorie deficit and, and calorie surplus or whatever your, your calories at the end of the day end up being. Because at the end of the day, the body can only, you know, allocate so many calories to exercise. And if you do too much of it, it's not going to be, all of it is not going to go there. This is the reason why most people doing a lot of cardio do not see uh, nearly as much weight loss as they would predict. And this is, you know, now we know the science has proven that uh, there is a explanation behind it. So let's first talk about how many calories you would burn through, let's say official, you know, cardio exercise, whatever it is, let's say running, the most, you know, uh, popular cardio activity. So about 100 calories per mile. That's a really good ballpark. So it doesn't matter what pace you're doing it at because the distance covered is what matters. So every mile that you run, whether you jog or sprint or whatever, is probably gonna burn around roughly 100 calories, okay? So if you're running three miles, let's say, that's 300 calories. If you do that three times a week, it's 900 calories per week. Since one pound of fat is a bit over 3,500 calories, so it's gonna take you like four weeks, one month, to lose one pound of body fat if you're just relying on this cardio. So you can see that it's a very, very inefficient way of creating that calorie deficit. Much better way is obviously the diet, right? So if you, I always, always, always repeat this a million times. If you want to lose body fat, you actually want to get leaner, get rid of the gut and love handles and, you know, get really, you know, shredded, ripped or toned, whatever you call your ideal, you know, end goal when it comes to your body, diet is king for that. We do not exercise to lose weight because as I said, all of these exercise types, it doesn't matter what you do, they're gonna burn very, very few calories, usually not enough to actually see a visible or noticeable or measurable difference when it comes to losing body fat. So diet is where it's at. On the other hand, the one exception to this, of course, is if somebody's doing a lot of cardio. So let's say a professional endurance athlete doing six hours of, you know, swim, bike, run, or cycling a day. Sure, but if you, yes, in that case, of course it's gonna work because they will burn a lot of calories, but again, you know, most professional athletes, especially endurance athletes, do not have weight issues. <laughs> they don't need to lose weight, right? So for us people who are, you know, either you are an entrepreneur that has a either, you know, a family, wife, partner, children, you know, a business to focus on, you actually have a life, right? So you can't be, you know, out there cycling six hours a day. Uh, in that case, much, much, much better uh, option is to focus on your diet. So when it comes to cardio, you may be expecting to burn three to five, maybe 600 calories per hour. And again, please remember that it varies a lot here. Let's say a 120 pound woman and 250 pound guy, if they do the same exact uh, uh, you know, activity, same exact pace, let's say they're biking together, they're not gonna burn the same amount of calories. It's gonna be vastly different because a bigger person burns more calories. Now, even within that, if we have, let's say two guys and both of them weigh 200 pounds, but one of them has 28% body fat, so you know, very overweight, so that means has a lot of, well, less muscle. And this other guy is, let's say, ripped. He's 200 pounds, but he has you know, 9% body fat, so that means he's got like, whatever, 180 pounds of lean body mass. So at the end of the day, the difference between these two guys is also going to be there. It's not gonna be as huge as, you know, let's say a guy that's 250 pounds or a woman that's 120. The difference between them is gonna be really you know, drastic. Between these two guys, yes, 
there is still a difference. Not as big, but still a difference. So it matters a lot. That's why I say, you know, I can't say every person in the world is gonna burn 500 calories doing an hour of cardio because that's simply not true. It depends on you. Also, of course, it depends on intensity. It's not the same if you're jogging for an hour or if you're doing like, you know, let's say all out 10K run, you're actually racing. So let's say you do, you know, 10K run and you're running, I don't know, four, uh, minutes per kilometer, so it takes you 40 minutes to run 10K. It's not the same as somebody's jogging 10K, and you know, so obviously intensity matters, duh, right? Of course it does. So there's a lot of these factors that really influence how many calories you're gonna burn through cardio. But remember, it's still, at the end of the day, for the most part, so for most of us who have, you know, let's say you're doing one to three cardio sessions per week, and maybe they are 40 to 60 minutes long, something like that, it's not gonna be a lot of calories. It's gonna be very, very hard to lose weight effectively uh, by doing just that. However, it becomes even worse when it comes to calorie burn from lifting weights. Why? Simply because cardio tends to be a continuous activity. When you're running, you're kind of running, right? For half an hour, or however long, you're running. On the other hand, lifting weights is not like that. As you know, you're in the gym lifting for 30, 40 seconds in one set, and then you usually rest between one and two minutes. So if you look at your hour in the gym, maybe, and this is a big maybe, you're lifting, actually doing some, you know, push, pull, whatever you're doing, you're actually lifting weights or doing that resistance, maybe 20 to 25 minutes, and even that is probably like, you know, more than most people actually do at the end of the day. So, you know, how many calories do you actually burn through lifting? Well, it's 0.1 calories, per minute per kilo of body weight. So really what it comes down to is, you know, so when you know your kilos, which is your uh, weight in pounds divided by 2.2. So for example, I weigh 220 pounds, that's 100 kilos roughly. Okay, I will burn 10 calories. So you just divide by 10 and that's 10 calories per minute of lifting. So let's say I'm in the gym for an hour and I'm actually lifting weights for 25 minutes. I'm gonna burn 25 times 10, 250 calories. So 220 pound guy is gonna burn you know, 250 calories in one workout session of lifting weights. And again, yes, some people may burn a bit more, some may burn a bit less. For most women, it's probably gonna be 150, 180, definitely under 200 calories per hour for most women who are in the gym lifting weights, okay? So remember guys, if you're doing that, let's say four times a week, so you are very committed, you're going to the gym four times a week, and you burn 200 calories each time, you just burned 800 calories during that week. Great, it's gonna take you four weeks if that's all you rely on to burn one pound of body fat. Who's gonna wait one month to lose one pound of body fat? We can do multiple times that just with little tweaks in your diet. So this is why I always say exercise, we do not do exercise to lose weight. Exercise is a very, very, very inefficient weight loss tool. We always use tweaks in your diet to lose body fat, to create that deficit that loses, that allows you to lose body fat. Why do we exercise then? Well, two different reasons. We do cardio for cardiovascular health. It's very healthy and good for you to do cardio. We also know that even if you are at maintenance calories, so you're not in a deficit, not in a surplus, you're eating exactly what your body needs to maintain the weight, but you're doing cardio, this can actually help you lose visceral fat, which is the fat in you know the, the core, the stomach and organs, like right here, the central uh, kind of organs part of your body. This is where the visceral fat is between the organs. You can't see it. That's not the subcutaneous fat. That's the visceral fat between the organs. This is the most dangerous type of fat because it's so close to your heart and it actually raises your uh, risks of all the cardiovascular diseases, heart attacks and everything else. So the number one thing that you can do for your health is reduce the amount of visceral fat you have. And it just so happens that both cardio especially and to a little lesser degree, but also lifting weights, so general exercise can help you lose visceral fat even if you are not in a calorie deficit. Now studies have shown that enough times and of course anybody who kind of is into this would probably guess that to be the case as well. This is why we work out. This is why we exercise for general health, especially when it comes to cardio. When it comes to lifting weights, yes, it's healthy and good for you, but the main reason to lift weights is to actually build muscle. And of course, the list of reasons why you should build muscle and the benefits is way too long. Like it would take us an hour to list all of the things that are good from having more muscle up to your natural max maximum 
uh, muscular potential. Of course, I'm not talking taking steroids and turning into, you know, a 300 pound monster, like, you know, big Remy and things like that. That is certainly not healthy. Not only that it's not healthy to take steroids to get there, but it's not healthy to have that much muscle either because it's a supraphysiological uh, level, which means beyond what you would normally have, which puts extra stress on your heart and hence uh, increases your, again, risks of heart attacks and everything else when you are at that level beyond the natural one. On the other hand, naturally building as much muscle as you can is the healthiest, best thing you can do for not just your health, but longevity as well. And of course, along the way, you're gonna have faster metabolism because muscle burns calories more than fat does, three times more uh, to be exact. And therefore, more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism will be, more carbs you can have, more glucose receptors you have. So, and you, of course, you're gonna look better, be stronger, pretty much have more testosterone because there's a correlation between the level of testosterone and the amount of muscle you have. So all the great things happen when you have more muscle. So that's why, remember please, we lift weights to build muscle, we do cardio for cardiovascular and overall health, and we diet to lose body fat. So hope this was helpful. Uh, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button below. Also, if you like this video, click the like button and also hit that notification bell. So every time, uh, every Friday and Sunday when we come up with new videos, you actually got get a notification for it. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.